Hello everybody and thank you for coming back to the channel and welcome to this new video on the building of the Dumas Hawker Hurricane. Again, once again, thank you to Raymond Richards for sending the, the kit over because he sent it over and uh, that's, uh, that's fantastic, really incredible, I still struggle to believe that. And uh, I also have to make a, a, a point here that I'm following the videos from Skippy. If you look up on YouTube, Skippy's Dumas Hoka Hurricane RC conversion, I'm following those and I'm taking, I don't want to say stealing, but I'm getting inspired by a lot of the points that he's, uh, that he's making. So, so really, he's actually the master, he's the one that's leading the way and I'm trying to copy what I can from, from him. What I've done, I've laid out the plan as you can see. It's a two-sided plan, on this side we have then the, the fuselage box which is what I've started, I'll get to that also. We've got the tail plane, the fin and rudder and also then the, the wing under all the material. One thing that Skippy did recommend was to photocopy the the pieces of wood so that we would have because not all the pieces are actually drawn on the plan so if I break one then I have no actual way of, uh, of reproducing it I haven't done it because first I don't have a copy machine these pieces are also longer than a normal piece of piece of paper so if I would take it down to a copy shop it would be an awkward conversation to get them to photocopy this and uh, actually I was afraid of even breaking it on the way because they are quite quite feeble so I better not break anything and if I do break something I'll have to reverse engineer it somehow. Um, the, uh, as a difference to Skippy, Skippy did start with the wing which I did consider also but somehow I felt that the wing is going to be very big so I'm starting with the fuselage and now the fuselage is made up of a box first of all and on that box then some formers will be stuck on and on that then also then the stringers right to give the, the classical shape of the, of the hurricane. So what I've done, and I'm copying this idea from Skippy directly, I've uh, cut out, I'm starting to cut out the pieces directly. You see here is the, the, tall, the long piece that goes here at the top. Let me indicate it somehow here with a finger. Where's my red pencil? This is the, the long piece. Uh, here, these are the pieces. Here it says it's uh, to be laminated. It says here laminate two, three, thirty second square strips. Skip it. Did try that and it didn't work too well. So I've, cop I've saved myself hours of work, of, of hobby basically, and I've uh, just traced them and cut them out of a similar or the same thickness of wood. So, so that's a good lesson learned also that I'm taking from him. And uh, what I'm doing, I'm cutting out the the pieces and uh, putting them there and then at some point I'll bring them down and then glue them all together. So that is the process. The result of this is going to be um, a box frame which I think is, uh, is going to be good and uh, gradually then I'll follow Skippy st uh, steps and then to see, probably going to build the hatch on it also, see how we put then the, the, all the pieces together. So there's still quite a lot of, of work going to, that has to happen here. A lot of cutting, a lot of measuring, a lot of uh, then gluing together, which is uh, which is okay. That's the whole point of it. So follow along on this one. I'll I'll update you when I have at least one of the sides of the fuselage ready, maybe even a little bit more, as this uh, this will take some time, which is great. And a brief update on the building of the fuselage. So I've got both sides already built. I think they're relatively okay, like they're similar. Like pretty much the same, not, not completely, it's, it's always difficult to do them the same. What I did actually when using the pins on the plan, I used exactly the same holes to hold the pieces together so that at least the outline would be the same. I did do some slight sanding, especially in this part, in this part where the, actually, the, the wing will actually settle onto this, or the fuselage will settle on the wing on this to make sure that it's uh, as close as possible. Um, there's one detail also that uh, these things at the these pieces at the front they have an inclination of two degrees which I think is for the rubber powered model but I'm not sure exactly how I can influence that it's exactly those two degrees so I try to put it in there but we'll see I think then putting an electric motor I hope that precision is not so crucial but uh, in overall as you can see so two sides of the of the box frame for the fuselage always like in these that uh, even if they're quite flexible on this angle they're actually quite sturdy so they do they do support quite a lot of, of force and uh, then the next step is to on this part of the model 
to put them together I think this goes this will go something like this and then I have to before doing that I have to cut out the the connecting pieces and uh, and put them in place and glue them it's a, this is a bit of the fiddly part because we do want I do want things to be straight and vertical and uh, and, and looking good so a bit more fiddly but also fun very enjoyable part of the building using balsa and seeing progress so really enjoyed that went quite fast I think two days one day each and uh, it was quite fun so let's see what the next steps and here I'm with an update on the construction of the fuselage so I'm using anything I find I've got some new glue by the way um, to keep, see, keep things up straight and uh, let me remove it from the plank and show you And the way I went about actually was I, I fixed first of all the cross struts, These are, it's upside down now, and I fixed those to the plan and then stuck the sides to it, upside down. Um, and then I did first the, the middle ones because they're straight, and then as that was already a bit dry, then I also tweaked in the, the fuselage tail and I, I, I pinched it in and then also built them the rest. So it's upside down and uh, I hope that it's somehow keeping the shape well let's see it's a bit stuck to the plastic and there it is so quite a big structure um, I'm always fascinated like how I can put all this together with just like sticks and a little bit of glue and uh, it has quite a lot of rigidity to it I've got to admit that if I try to bend it like this it does bend a little bit but not too much uh, so it is quite rigid on top of this then we'll have then the formers and things like that that will give the, the shape and uh, probably the next step I've got to figure it out but it's probably going to be to do the nose part the battery hatch because I know that also Skippy has already figured out how to put the battery hatch I'll probably copy him on that and start to do the, the complicated part of designing where the battery is going to go where the motor the ESC and I don't have those actually I, I need a new ESC and, uh, and then eventually also for the servers where they're going to be sitting that they control then the tail surfaces and things like that so um, nice progress now a much more complicated part comes up where I have to figure things out which is as usual that's a fun part of this and I'm back with an update on the battery hatch again I'm following the practice from Skippy I was thinking of making it smaller because Skippy did run into the problem that uh, at this point then the canopy comes in and you had to push it back a little bit so I was thinking of doing it just from frames 2 to 4 and I think my batteries would have fit through there I have this battery it's a smaller one I got than even the larger one that I have the 2S battery I probably would have me I would have been able to to get it in there but in the end I decided to go with I mean if Skippy does it he's the expert I'm going to do it also like like he's doing it um, basically what uh, what he was doing and I also copied uh, cut out some so like a frame which is the two frames actually one that goes onto the fuselage that is stuck here I'm still gluing it that's why I'm squeezing it in and then the same the very same frame then for the hatch itself that I'll show you right now and uh, glue it on top I think it does give it also quite a lot of sturdiness these formers at some point I'll have to cut out or these struts I'll, I will cut out um, so that uh, so that I can put the battery in and maybe even access. I suppose at some point in here, I'll also have to put in the the ESC. So I'm I'm expecting the motor will come on here, and then the ESC will somehow live right behind the motor in here, and uh, and then the battery here. And this is all ahead of the of the wing or at the very beginning of the wing. So I hope that that balances also then the the weight quite well. So what I did. So I, I put that frame, I stuck it on, I already put on the, the magnets on it, I put a very strong magnet, I think it's maybe too strong here, um, and, uh, and one at the back, and, uh, and then for the formers, some of the formers I could reuse, let me go to the hatch itself, and uh, some of the, the, the middle ones, I think it's number 3 and 4 formers, I, I could reuse it, Three actually I cut it off because the original one was a completely round one and then I had to remake formers two and five this one you have an, I even put a number five in there so you can see it 
and uh, what I did have to do I had to shorten them or cut them the the width of these two plates so it's uh, I think it's two millimeters each or four millimeters I don't know how much that is in Imperial um, and that's basically the shape of the of the hatch what I've also done I've put in some holes because with some toothpicks I want to put in some dowels to make sure it doesn't move I think the magnets are so strong it's not going to it's not going to be a problem but uh, I put in maybe some maybe I don't even put it in I think I'll, I'll see um, then the the next step is going to be then to put some stringers that's 1 16th stringers I have still some left over from from the chipmunk so this is still drying so I don't want to to risk it too much but uh, then the former should come in here and that and give that shape to the to the hatch kind of like this and uh, and that will actually give the, the hatch shape and then it will go on top I'm not going to put more formers more of the stringers I'm afraid uh, sorry um, on the fuselage because I'm still I'm still going to need access in there maybe for ESC maybe motors and things like that which I don't have the ESC I do have a motor I think so I'll, I'll, it's the same model as I have on the on the cup so I'll probably use that same one so I probably can start to mount the, the motor but no ESC and no receiver yet so I've got something on order so let's see if that comes but that's why I'm not going to put in there the, the stringers yet so I'll finish this hatch off and then the next step is going to be the servos or the server plate for the for the elevator and tail tail surfaces basically um, let's see how this goes I'll show you when I have some progress time for another update so as you can see the battery hatch is finished the only challenge is that I believe I put a very strong magnet on the front so it's difficult to take out I thought it would be good but it's it's quite difficult to, to take out but I've got there the toothpicks so bits of toothpicks I think you can see them and little holes there so if I put it in there from the back and they clips on it was so strong that it's a bit difficult to take off and it was actually sticking out a little bit but in overall a very very satisfying sound this clicking when it when it goes in I still have to put in the the former here I think it's number five which is lying around somewhere to make sure that I can actually take it on and put it off put it on and take it off again so that's the the battery hatch so I, I think I might even start to tissue it just to to practice a bit of that and uh, let's see if I put it back on then the next step is to put on the motor I still have to figure out all the electronics so I do have this ESC from from Raymond it says 18 amps what I'm checking for the little motor that I have it should be it should be enough and um, I've got another motor same as with the uh, with the Piper Cub I think it's this BR1407 and uh, I think it's maybe more than enough, maybe even too much, but it's the smallest one that I have. Um, and I have ordered another motor online, but it might take quite a while. So I think I'm going to try this with this one. For this, I've designed a, I'm going to say a firewall, a plate basically to put it on. I've marked in here all the different holes I need to make. Let's see if you can see it. So I'm going to make a hole here in the middle for the axle of the, of the motor here then four little holes here for the screws to be able to screw this on I hope they're in the right place um, and then four holes here to be able to screw this plate then to the front of the here to the front of the of the model I've traced it out and I've made it a bit smaller to allow for the for the stringers in case they go out a little bit more and, and then to make holes into into the balsa wood here and then I'll probably fix it with some with some screws and nuts on the other side so that's still to be done and then another hole here a bigger hole for the cables to go through my only worry now is that there's pretty much no space to make holes for ventilation so I'm not sure if I'll make maybe make more holes for ventilation to allow for some airflow to go in to cool down the, the ESC but anyhow that's uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a lot because let's see if this flies but anyhow, this is now the what I'm focusing on. I'll be drilling, I don't know how many holes, one, four, eight, nine, ten, ten holes, which is quite a lot of holes to drill in. And then I have to figure out how to where I'm going to put in the ESC and the receiver that I don't have. I'm also waiting for the receiver. So I might have to pause the front part of the electronics for a while. I can then still go and put in the the servos for the for the tail surfaces. But uh, 
we'll see. I'll update you with this and then maybe I'll gradually wrap this video up because it's getting very long. And it's time to wrap up this chapter. So what I've managed to do, I've uh, prepared the, the plate. Uh, it's actually plywood, one millimeter plywood. I've made all the holes, I've attached the motor to it. I've done the a hole, I don't know if you can see it there, to put the cables through eventually. And also some holes to fix it then to the um, to this first frame number one, I believe it's called. I do have the feeling that, I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, the down thrust is maybe too much. On the plank it says it's two degrees, but I probably didn't do it exactly. So I think it's too much, but I can fix it because I can put in here some some washers. I don't know if it's focusing, does it focus? I can put in some washers here and then lift it up a little bit so it won't be so, so far down. But uh, overall I think it's holding in well, so that's... Uh, that's positive and then the next steps but that will be then the next chapter is going to be a placing of a servo traying here and probably also building the tail surfaces so that I know exactly where the cables the, the push rods are going to be coming out so next one maybe tail surfaces and then the the, um, the tray for the servos in any case some some progress actually quite a lot of progress very enjoyable to build to build the bolsa put the bolsa together and things like that so having fun so far thank you everybody for watching and i'll see you next time